So what do you do if your RPOD power converter fails while you're camping? In this episode, I'll share my recent experience of having to deal with this issue. We'll go over a step-by-step -step process that I took to replace my faulty power converter. Hey everybody, this is John Marucci. Thanks for visiting the On The Road YouTube channel. You know, this channel is all about helping you get the most out of your RPOD experience. Before we get going, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are published. If you want to dive deeper, we put more content and photos on Instagram and Twitter at John Marucci. So let's jump in. We were out camping and noticed that looking at the monitor panel, which I do regularly when we're camping, the battery lights weren't all lit. So I noticed some, I knew something was going wrong and figured that we weren't charging the battery properly. So when all the lights aren't on and you're plugged into shore power like we were, then you know you have a problem likely with a converter, meaning the, the converter is not taking shore power and charging your battery properly. Okay, so the next thing we did is I actually went out and disconnected the battery and left the shore power on and all our lights turned off. So the monitor panel lights, the light on the front of the refrigerator, and all the, the, the LED lights in the unit would not work. So I knew that the converter wasn't working properly. So what I did then was I went on the forums group, uh, Facebook owners group, and asked around and just to double check if I was you know, diagnosing this properly. And basically the consensus was, yeah, it looks like a converter failure. And so one of the folks on the uh, forums group said, what you probably want to do pretty quickly is get a battery charger. Now I didn't have a battery charger with me, and now I will always have a battery charger with me because it really saved our, our camping trip. That was just the first night we were out when this happened, and we we're going to be gone for quite a little bit of time here. So I went out uh, and got a battery charger and then was able to charge my battery on the go, and it worked fine. But basically, you know, what we had to do is we went to Amazon and got a replacement unit. And this is also some of the counsel of the folks that I interacted with on the forum to get a replacement from Amazon so it will come quicker and I can replace then the uh, converter and not have to wait for the warranty unit to be redone. Now, this unit was under warranty. It was only 18 months old, so I can send it back, but the time of that would take quite a while. Yeah, I remember with a warranty situation, you're going to have to send the defective unit in and they're going to have to verify that it isn't working properly and then send you a replacement unit. All right, so to do that, by the way, you have to go to the wfcoelectronics.com uh, website. We'll put that link in as well in the description and fill out a warranty form and email or fax it in. You got to get an RGA number from them that you put on the box. You actually load the unit into a box and ship it down to them. They then have to verify that it's not working right and send you a replacement. Well, I didn't want to wait that long. I wanted to get back from my camping trip and replace it immediately, so we used an Amazon uh, unit, and then we actually uh, later sent the unit out and going to get it replaced. Okay, so it's pretty easy to do this replacement, and it doesn't take a tremendous amount of skill. It just takes a few tools, like some needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver, and then you specifically need a P3 Phillips bit and a square bit, an S2 square bit that you use on some of the connections. Okay, so now we're going to go over the steps, step by step, how to take out the faulty converter and how to put the new one in. So we're going to go each step here in detail and show you how we did it. Okay, so the first thing obviously whenever you're dealing with electric is disconnect the power. Safety first. You're going to want to disconnect shore power and your battery both so you have no power to the R-Pod at all when you do this. Very first step. So then there's two screws on the cover to the WFCO distribution center there. Uh, and you just take those two screws off, very simple to do. Once you take those screws off, the panel will come right out and you can just place that to the side and, and keep it away from what you're doing. So the next thing is there's two screws actually on the converter. Now the converter's at the very bottom near the floor. It's below the switch panel with all your, with all your uh, fuses, etc. And it's very easy to, to see it there at the bottom. And then you just take those two screws out of that and it'll slide right out. So the converter then is slid out and you can see the five wires that are connected that you're going to need to, uh, to disconnect to remove it. Now before you do any of this, I highly recommend that you take your phone and you take some pictures of the entire thing, where the fuses are, all the wires, take a lot of pictures so you have them to reference later. And you'll need them in just a moment. Okay, when the next step I did was I actually remo removed all the fuses. Now, I'm kind of tentative on saying that you have to do that because I think it's kind of optional. When, after I did this whole project, I probably could have gone without doing that. 
but I removed all the fuses because I didn't want them to get damaged in the process in any way. So I removed the fuses with needle nose pliers, put them aside, and then on the fuse where the fuses are on that side of the board, the DC side of the board, I loosened the white and the raspberry wire. So these are kind of tight and they should be, and you've got to use a little torque and take those uh, screws out a little bit to loosen the white and the raspberry wires. Okay, uh, the next thing is, is you remove the fuse panel where those wires were. Now the fuse panel actually slips in a little, uh, a little place under there that you just click down to pull out, and it snaps in place and comes out. So you remove the fuse panel so you can release that white, those white, the white and the raspberry colored wires, and you just pull those wires out. Once you get them loose, you can pull them out and pull them right through the hole and get them released from the unit. Okay, on the breaker side, on the other side, you have three wires you need to take out, a green one, a white one, and a black one. The first thing we're going to look at is actually taking out the green wire. So this is just higher up, and you've got to use the proper tool to do that with, as you can see here. And we just loosed the green wire and fished it out and pulled it through. And then the white wire, likewise, is connected to the board there, and we're going to loosen that. Uh, with the proper tool there and unhook the white wire and also pull that through. And finally, there's a black wire that's actually connected to the 50 amp, 15 amp breaker that you also want to just loosen and pull through. So now you have all five wires that are out of the board and loosened and you can pull those through and actually can at this point slide the entire old converter up. And then um, the next thing obviously you're going to want to do is open up the new converter that you're replacing it with have a look at it. As you can see here, the new and old converter are identical. And, uh, and we, by the way, we'll put a link below in the description for this exact unit if you need it that we got from Amazon. And so the next steps are just inserting the new converter. And that's really just the same thing we did in reverse. So you're going to thread the black, white, and green wires through the same hole that we took them out of coming from the new converter. And then slowly and surely connect these. The black wire obviously connect to the 15, 15 amp breaker. The green wire is a little more difficult. You got to take a little time. This may be a little difficult to fish it around some things, get it behind some wires, up into its connector point, and then secure that in and tighten it down. Likewise, with the white wire, you have to do something very similar. And again, there's a lot of wires in the way here, so you're going to want to fish that around carefully and get that white wire put back where it's supposed to be, tightened down, and you're good to go. And then on the uh, fuse side of the board there, we're going to bring the raspberry the new raspberry and white wires up through that hole and fish them up and get them in there. Again, the, the fuse board is out so we can reach around there and pull the white and raspberry uh, wires where they need to be. And these ones have to be torqued down pretty good, so make sure you're careful inserting them fully and then using the proper tool to tight them, tighten them down well and get them both tightened uh, pretty tight so that they're not going to come loose at all by shaking and rattling of the unit of, of the R pod while you're going down the road, so make sure it's good and tight. Finally, you snap the fuse panel back into its place. It just sits under a little ridge, and the bottom you can shove the bottom in here until it clicks under the plastic that's sitting out, little ledge there, and then that's good to go, and you're good for that. And finally, just slide the converter back into its place, put the two screws in, and the converter's back where it needs to be, and you should be good for the converter replacement. Just five simple wires uh, and doing it in reverse of the way you took it out. Okay, so. Now, we've re now the, obviously, I've taken all the fuses out. Again, I think this is optional, but then I went back, and if you'll notice here in this picture, I've got a picture of where the fuses go on my iPhone sitting right next to what I'm doing. That's why good counsel to take pictures of everything. I took a close-up of the fuses where they belong. So now you can see me putting the fuses back in based on the picture that I have right next to me. And uh, finally, you're going to reattach the distribution center cover. Very simple to do with the two screws, and you're good to go. Now, testing it. All we did first, before we ever even uh, plugged the battery, hooked the battery back in, we just plugged into shore power. And the nice thing is you'll know right away if the converter is working because it should power all the LED lights in the unit as well as the kitchen panel, I mean the refrigerator panel. And so you should have power throughout the unit. And when we did that, sure enough, it worked. All the lights came on. We weren't having any problems with the converter. It converted the shore power to DC and everything was working fine. Finally, I just reconnected the battery and uh, I noticed right away, another good sign, that the new converter's fan started going, and you could, you could sense that it was, you know, by hearing it, that it was starting to charge the battery up on its own through shore power. So that's all the steps. This is really for those, hopefully you never have to go through this, but sometimes this is one of those maintenance items that people have to deal with and I had to deal with. 
And so hopefully these, these steps were helpful to you and this can be a, a reference video if you ever need it. Again, the uh, replacement unit, the link, the Amazon link to that replacement unit will be in the description below for your reference if you need that. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And you know, I wanna know if you've ever had to replace your R-Pod converter or charger. If, if you have, I invite you to share your comments and experiences below. You know, we love hearing from you. And your comments, by the way, can really help other people out. So I really encourage you to take a moment and leave some comments. And this is John Marucci. Thanks for watching again and so long for now.